AI is taking over our video editing softwares and believe it or not, this is actually a good thing. So in this video, let's talk about some AI features in Premiere Pro that'll help you make better videos way faster. Text-based editing is probably the feature of 2023. There are so many major softwares that have introduced text-based editing and so has Premiere Pro. But why is it so popular? Well, it is a game changer for editing rough cuts as well as interviews, for example. It cuts your editing time by half. Instead of having to go through the whole edit on the timeline, you can now read the transcript and make the edits in the transcript. Transcript. And as you're doing this, you'll cut out those sections on the timeline. You're essentially editing your video as if you're editing a Word document. You can create cuts, you can remove sentences. It is so much more efficient as you can now scan through text instead of having to skip through the timeline. Now in Premiere Pro 24.1, they've now added the option to detect filler words like uh and um. You can delete all of them in one click and choose extract or lift. Now, if you choose lift, Premiere will remove the filler words and keep the gaps on the timeline. You can now also search for specific words and replace them all at once. Text-based editing also eliminates the hurdle of actually learning how to edit videos when you have to make such a rough cut. Controversy, I know. I know what you're thinking and I actually agree, but hear me out. Obviously, you still need to learn how to edit and become a good editor because text-based editing is not going to be the ultimate solution that will fully eliminate the video editing skill. However, I dare say that it does make it more accessible to a lot more people. After you're done editing the text, it is now time to move on to the timeline, fine-tune it, add B-roll, add sound design. So yes, you still do need video skills, but I do think the text-based editing is very beneficial for beginners for this reason, but also for pro editors as it makes your editing process just a lot more efficient and faster. Now, here's a few tips if you want to start text-based editing. If you're going to use this for all of your edits, you're going to want Premiere Pro to automatically transcribe all of your sequences. And to do this, we're going to Premiere Pro, Settings, transcription, and then tick the box, automatically transcribe clips. Now here you can also change some of the default settings, like whether you want Premiere Pro to transcribe all of the clips or only the ones on the timeline and the language, for example. You can also use the transcription to navigate through your timeline, because as you're clicking through the transcription, you'll see that the playhead is actually moving to that exact point on the timeline. Now this makes navigation a lot more efficient and a lot faster. And if you right click on the transcription, you'll see the shortcuts in order to edit the video using the transcript. If you want to get rid of all of the pauses in your video, here's what I recommend you to do. There is actually a setting that will show all of the pauses. If you turn this on, you can easily identify and delete them. Now, after we're done polishing our video, we may want to add some music. And I've said this before, and I'll say this till the end of time. Use the remix tool. Go to your toolbar, click and hold this ripple edit tool, and then click on remix. Now we're going to grab the end of the song and we will extend the song all the way till the end of the video and we'll watch Premiere Pro do its magic. Now this also works if you wanna shorten a song. It's honestly just a brilliant way to not have to cut the music and try to make it work yourself to make it a specific length in your video. And if you're curious about what this sounds like, cause I've gotten that question more often, well, I am using this tool in all of my videos, so also in this one. So if you haven't heard any weird cuts or anything, that is because this remix tool is just magic. Now, if we were to play through the video, the music is really loud and we cannot really hear what the speaker is saying. So we need to balance those volumes. We can do this in a few different ways. The most straightforward way of doing this is just grabbing that volume line on the music track and dragging it down. Now it's going to be the same volume the entire time. So what we have to do is we have to enable the pen tool by pressing P on our keyboard. We'll create one keyframe, then we'll create another keyframe right that here, that part, and then so here and here, and, and then we're going to grab that. Oh, no, 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 no. This video is about AI features. So why are we doing this manually? Let me show you how to do this automatically. Let's go to window and then click on essential sound. That should open up this panel right here. And we're gonna select all of the audio of the speaker, in this case myself, and I'm gonna label that as dialogue. Then we're gonna do the same for the music track. I'm going to select the music track and then label it as music. Now in Premiere Pro 24.1, you can select all of the audio clips and then just click on auto tag and let Premiere Pro do the work for you. In the essential sound panel right now, we see a feature called ducking and we're gonna check the box to enable this. Then we're gonna click on duck against dialogue because we want the music to follow the dialogue. So when there's no dialogue, no one's speaking, we want the music to go up. And then when someone starts speaking again, we want the music to go down. 
Then we're going to adjust the duck amount, so by how much we want the music to be ducked, and the fade duration, so how fast you want to go from keyframe one to keyframe two. Then click on generate keyframes and honestly you may want to play around with this. Don't just copy my settings, just play around with the settings and see what works good for you. There is actually one feature in the essential sounds panel that I need you to know about because Premiere Pro literally just released this and that is the enhanced speech slider. Click on one of the dialogue clips and then click on enhance. Then you can adjust the mix amount by adding less or more of this enhancement to your voice. Let's say you want to repurpose a video, but you don't have the project anymore and you don't have the original files anymore. All you have is the final video. Don't worry, you will not have to go in and find every single cut because there is an AI powered tool for this called Scene Edit Detection. Drop the final video on the timeline and then right click on it and click on Scene Edit Detection. Now here we can choose if we want to create a bin of the subclips for every detected point. This is great if you want to rebuild an edit and you just want to have all of those little clips that you can then drag onto the timeline. And if you want a marker at each detected cut point on the source file, check this box. Then click on analyze and when Premiere Pro is done, you can now start re-editing your video. And let's say that you actually want to repurpose this video for Instagram or TikTok and you want it to be vertical. That's gonna be my next tip. A few years ago, Premiere Pro released its then flagship product, the Auto Reframe, and it does exactly what the name says. It automatically reframes your sequence for any type of platform. So let's use our vertical platform as an example. All we gotta do is right click on the project bin and then click on Auto Reframe Sequence. Now this window should pop up and this is where we can change the sequence name, the target aspect ratio, in this example, nine by 16, and how fast we want the motion to be tracked. I usually set this to default because I personally don't jump around in my videos like crazy, nothing interesting is happening. So let's just click on create and Premiere Pro will now automatically process your sequence and get it ready for TikTok or Instagram. The last step of the video editing process is coloring. And usually this is done last in case any re-edits need to be done and we want to avoid unnecessary work. Also, it could actually slow down the playback in Premiere Pro or in any video editing software, which is usually why it's done last. By color, I mean the color correction and the color grading. And this is a process that takes quite some time to master and therefore it can be quite overwhelming. There's vector scopes, there's waveforms that we have to read in order to nail the color correction. So obviously Premiere Pro knows this and thought, let's just make this easier for you with another AI powered feature. For this one, we're going to have to open up the Lumetri color panel. And with this this clip selected right here, we're going to go to the basic correction tab and just click on the button auto. This will automatically correct the exposure and the white balance of that specific clip. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you have log files. Instead, I want you to go to project settings, color, and then check the box in front of auto detect log video color space. However, I would still really, really, really recommend you and really urge you to learn color correction and how to do this manually, as this is not the ultimate cheat code to color correction. You're going to want to click on this video right here where I share a step-by-step -step guide on how to nail color correction each and every time, even as a beginner.